if you or I were God, and praise the Lord we're not, but if just, you know, if we were, what city would you have the Messiah born in? Jerusalem? The religious capital of the world? Rome? The political capital of the world? Athens? The intellectual and philosophical capital of the world? Certainly not the little town of Bethlehem. A couple hundred people. The fact that Jesus was born in Bethlehem and not Jerusalem, not Rome, not Athens, it, it shows God's desire to relate to common, ordinary, regular people like you and me. That, that he, he came to relate to everyone. Bethlehem emphasizes his humility. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9 says, Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation. He's lowly and riding on a donkey. He's, he's lowly. He's humble. He's from Bethlehem. Jesus, Bethlehem says Jesus is accessible. He's accessible to everyone, not just the elite, not just the powerful, not just the wealthy, not just the intellectuals, but whosoever will may come to him and receive the forgiveness of their sins and salvation. Now, you know the story from the New Testament. You know that to fulfill this prophecy, God caused Caesar Augustus to issue a decree, Luke chapter 2, that all the world should be registered in their hometown. God literally moved the entire population of the Roman Empire just so Joseph would leave Nazareth with his wife Mary, who was in the final months of her pregnancy, and he would travel down to Bethlehem so that Jesus would be born in Bethlehem in fulfillment of this prophecy. Remember also when the wise men showed up in Jerusalem and they asked Herod the Great, uh, where is the one born the king of the Jews? We have come to worship him. Remember Herod the Great sent to the religious leaders and he asked the religious leaders, where will the Messiah be born? And they immediately said Bethlehem. And they quoted Micah 5 too. They didn't have to go research it and say, let me get back to you. Give me a couple days. I'll look into it and let you know. They knew immediately that the Messiah, the Savior, the King of the Jews would be born in Bethlehem. Because of Micah 5 too. Look at verse 2 again. It says, out of you, out of Bethlehem, will come the one who is to be ruler in Israel. Look what it says. Whose goings forth are from of old, from everlasting, or your translation might say from eternity. This means that this king that is coming, he will be eternal. But he, he, has, he will always exist. He has no beginning, which means he will be God. Because only God has no beginning. Jesus is God. He's Emmanuel. He's God with us. Colossians chapter one, verse 17 says Jesus was before all things. He's always existed. John chapter 1, verse 2, he was in the beginning with God. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come. I am the Almighty. So this one who will rule over Israel, he will be born in Bethlehem, and he will be God incarnate. Verse three, therefore, he shall give them up until the time that she who is in labor has given birth. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return to the children of Israel. The Jewish people will reject Jesus as their Messiah when he comes, as you know, from the Gospels, they'll crucify him. Therefore, he will give them up, but not forever. God is not finished with the Jewish people. He hasn't forsaken the Jewish people forever. He will give them up until the time that she who is in labor has given birth. This is referring to the time between the rejection of Jesus Christ by the Jewish people at his first advent and his second advent. God will give up the Jews temporarily. 
Romans chapter 11, verse 25 says that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. Right now, blindness in part has happened to the Jewish people so that they can't see spiritually. They can't see. Not every Jew. It's blindness in part. Some Jews do recognize Jesus as their Messiah. They're called Messianic Jews. But most Jews, most Jewish people, as a result of the rejection of Jesus Christ as the Messiah, they, they can't see it now. They have a blindness. They can't see that Jesus is the Messiah. They, they, they're blind to the gospel. They're blind to the scriptures. They can't see. And they'll remain blinded until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. God is primarily saving Gentiles right now, non-Jews. But there will be a point where the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. You know, the, the, the last Gentile that will be saved will be saved. And then the fullness of the Gentiles will come in and God will turn back to the Jewish people. And when will that be? During the time of the tribulation. The time of Jacob's trouble. Look what it says. When she who is in labor has given birth, uh, when the tribulation has come upon the earth, that's quite often compared to a woman in labor. 